In this lecture, I'd like to spend a couple of minutes to briefly describe the topics of this course. This is useful if you are planning to watch the lectures out of order. Hopefully, by the end of this lecture, you'll have enough information about each topic so that you can work out the order by which you'd like to watch them. Let's start with the boards. First up, we've got the Arduino 101. It's an Arduino that looks like an Uno. It's got the Uno form factor, but is powered by an Intel Curie CPU. It's a 3.3 volt board, but it is 5 volt tolerant because it's got level shifters assigned to each one of the headers. So you can plug in your peripherals from your Arduino Uno, including the shields, without worrying about the difference in voltages. It will just work. A very nice thing about the Arduino 101 are the integrated peripherals. So on the board, you've got Bluetooth low energy, you've got a six axis accelerometer and a real time counter. The Intel Curie CPU, it's a very fast processor, so you'll be running your sketches uh, very quickly. And there's a lot of flash and RAM for your sketches as well. A very nice board overall. Next up, we've got the Arduino Zero. The Arduino Zero is a unique board among the Arduino board lineup because of the integrated ETPG chip. This chip is dedicated to programming and debugging. The Arduino Zero is powered by an ARM Cortex M0 Plus microcontroller, which runs at 48 megahertz. It's a 3.3 volt board very fast and also very power efficient. So if you are building a gadget that will run on batteries, then the Arduino Zero is a very good choice. On board, you also have the EDPG chip, which makes this board stand uh, aside from the others. EDPG stands for Embedded Debugger, and it's the integrated circuit that allows you to both program the ARM Cortex processor and also to debug real-time sketches that are running on it and you can do the debugging using a variety of tools some of which i am talking about in this course so just because of this feature the arduino zero is a really interesting board to consider getting for yourself if you don't already have one on board you also have a digital to analog converter this is a, a true digital to analog converter so you can create arbitrary waveforms the Arduino Zero has the Arduino Uno form factor, so you can plug on it shields from your Arduino Uno. Just need to be careful though to make sure that the shield that you're plugging in works at 3.3 volts, otherwise you are risking damaging the board. The Arduino Zero also has an integrated real-time counter, so the, this Arduino can actually tell the time. And finally, it's got a native and programming USB port. It's got two USB ports. One we use typically for programming the Cortex processor, and the other one you can use it to connect peripherals to it, like mice and keyboards. You can also use the native USB port to emulate a keyboard or a mouse connected to a PC. And I'll show you how to do that as well in this course. Next up, we've got the Arduino Mega 2560. This is what I call an Uno on steroids. It behaves exactly like an Arduino Uno. It's five volts. It's got a 16 megahertz clock. And basically your sketches will just work exactly the same way as they do on the Arduino Uno. You can use your existing knowledge without having to add anything else to it. I think that the Arduino Mega 2560 is the easiest Arduino advanced board that people familiar with the Arduino Uno can get into and be productive immediately. So uh, the Arduino Mega's advantages over the Uno are uh, its lots of input-output pins and the plenty for communication options, including the four serial ports that you can access through the headers. Next, we've got the Arduino Duo. This is a board that looks a lot like the Mega, with the difference that this is an ARM-based 
board. It's using a SAM processor. It's 3.3 volts as opposed to 5 volts for the Arduino Mega. It's much faster at 84 megahertz and full 32 bits of processing. And it's also a lot more power efficient than the Arduino Mega. It is a board that has a different architecture and as a result you will need to be a little bit more careful when you migrate your sketches from the Uno to this board as well as your peripherals since it's a 3.3 volt only board it will not tolerate 5 volts you need to be careful it also features two digital to analog converters so you can have uh, this board creating two analog waveforms you can even play music if you like lots of storage in the microcontroller in terms of ram and flash so you can fit large sketches in it like the Arduino Zero, it features both a native and a programming USB port. So there are two ports on board that are used in the same way as in the Arduino Zero. And finally, as far as the boards are concerned, we've got the Arduino Galileo Generation 2, which is a unique board in the lineup of Arduino boards in this course. It is a computer which is running a version of Linux, the Yocto Linux. And as a result, you get all the benefits of running a full computer alongside your Arduino sketch. Your Arduino sketches can take advantage of the Linux operating system by passing system call commands from within your Arduino sketches. And therefore you can have Linux executing commands on demand uh, from your Arduino sketches, which is a very big advantage. I'll show you how that works as well in this course. And I think this is the feature that distinguishes this board as opposed to all the other boards in this course. It is a fast board. It's running at 400 megahertz with 256 megabytes of RAM dedicated to the Linux side. And your Arduino sketches can use a 512 kilobyte static RAM, which is also plentiful for the purposes of an Arduino sketch. And finally, uh, just like in the Arduino Dua, you have two USB ports. You've got a native and a programming USB port. So in a nutshell, these are the boards that I'll be talking about in this course. Let's move on to the tools now. First up, processing. Processing is a sketchbook, as, uh, as it's called, and a programming language. You use processing to build applications that present a lot of information on graphics. So artists use processing to create programs that generate really beautiful and interesting graphical representations, including 3D representations. Uh, the programming language has a similar syntax to the Arduino language, and hence it's familiar to Arduino makers. You'll be able to be productive very quickly with processing. In this course, we are looking at processing from the point of view of using it to write desktop applications that interact with the Arduino. And the interaction happens using a serial communication channel, uh, either USB or Bluetooth, perhaps. So I'll show you how to get for example, sensor data from the Arduino and turn that data into a graphical representation of the actual values. And you can also send data from your processing sketch back to the Arduino and have it control a motor, for example. So it's a very interesting tool to have in mind. Next tool is Tembu. If you are curious or interested in the Internet of Things, then Tembu is something that you must definitely look at. Tembu allows you to connect your Arduino to hundreds and hundreds of cloud services, like, for example, um, in this course, we'll be playing a lot with uh, various Google services. Tembu will generate the code that will run on the Arduino, so 
the programming effort that you will need to expend is minimal. You will just have to learn how to change certain keys and um, variables to connect everything together. So Timbu, really, really interesting Internet of Things platform. Next, we've got Atmel Studio. I cannot do a course on Arduino Advanced Tools without talking about Atmel Studio. Atmel Studio is Atmel's a free tool for programming uh, its microcontrollers, a whole range of Atmel microcontrollers. It is free. It is only running on Windows machines since it's based on Microsoft's Visual Studio. Nevertheless, it's a powerful editor. It offers all the modern features that you would expect, including code completion. Uh, it supports full debugging when you use it with an appropriate debugging tool like the Arduino Zero's EDBG onboard chip or Atmel's Eyes debugger and programmer that I'm also covering in this course. Next, uh, we've got Atmel ICE, as I mentioned briefly a few seconds ago. So Atmel ICE is Atmel's development tool for programming and debugging. It's a device that you connect onto your Arduino's board, usually via its SPI interface or the JTAG interface. Once you connect Atmel ICE to the board that you are debugging or programming, then you can use Atmel Studio as the interface to to proceed with the debugging session or the programming session. Open OCD and GDB is also a very good and powerful option specifically for debugging applications that are running on uh, various embedded devices. In, in our case, of course, we are interested in Arduino, and specifically I'll be doing a demonstration on how to use these tools to debug a sketch running on an Arduino Zero. Essentially, OpenCD and GDB do the same job as Atmel Studio, but on the command line and uh, using open source and free software that run on any computer. GDB is a GNU open source debugging tool and OpenCD is an open source free on-chip debugger. You use the two together. OpenCD is used to provide the connectivity layer between your computer and the tool that you use to do the debugging on the target chip. For example, um, the AVR microcontroller or a SAM or SAMD microcontroller, and then GDB provides the user interface. GDB is the component that gives us the debugging functionality like step in and step over and inspect and set variables and so on. So hopefully this introduction gives you an idea of the content of this course and uh, gives you enough information to choose uh, what is it that you'd like to learn next. Of course, you can just take things in order and move through the lectures one after the other.